My father, he was, um, he was shot in front of the masjid. And uh, it was after, after Isha prayer. We used to live close to the masjid, next to the masjid. He used to always clean the masjid. You know, the, the, the bathrooms and so forth. People didn't really know who actually cleaned until after he passed away. Then the bathroom started to smell. Because nobody really took care of that. And he never cleaned the bathroom or anything like that when people were there. Before he would go to work, he would stop in the masjid. He would clean everything up and then go. He would always look for the times that people would not see him. So nobody knew that he was doing any of these things. But he would always do that. He came out and I was in the house. And I heard, uh, I heard a gunshot, but I didn't think it was a gunshot. Because we have uh, Independence Day you know, in, in July. And people always have fireworks. And this was like a few days afterwards. And I'm thinking it's just... It's just that somebody's just burning their leftover M80s or something like that. I don't know. You know, they, these fireworks. And so I hear my father calling me, Abdulbari, Abdulbari, somebody shot me. So I went to him. And when he saw my face, he said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And then I told him, when I heard that, I said, Father, I don't care who talks to you from now on. Don't say a single word. Just in your heart, you've done a lot of good. And repent to Allah. Ask Allah for forgiveness and ask for His mercy. But don't say a single word after this. And he never said anything after that. The ambulance and everybody, anything, everything came. And then the police officer, the detective, started coming around asking me. He's asking me about what was happening and, you know, was the masjid open? Uh, what, and I was just walking around telling him what was happening, what, you know, what, what, what the area of the masjid. And so, and I was just speaking to him normally, just whatever would, you know, I was a little bit saddened, but, you know, I wasn't like yelling or anything like that. Just calm and speaking to him normally, normal, just like how anyone would speak to a person. Not during that situation, but after in the morning, he asked my, you know, the detective spoke to some of the other people. He spoke to one of my friends. So the detective, he said, you know that, in all the homicides and murders I've seen in my life, I've never seen somebody like him. It's amazing. So he told me, you made great da'wah. I said, well, I didn't even speak about Islam, my friend said. I didn't speak, I didn't say anything about Islam. He said, you made great da'wah. The detective came to me and he said, in all my days, I'm, I've witnessed hundreds, hundreds of crime scenes. Never seen somebody, especially related to somebody who was just murdered, like him. So how? I, I even thought that he did it. That's the detective. I said, "It's not humanly possible. It's not humanly possible for somebody to be in that state." You know, most people are going crazy. And so I told him. I said, "Let me tell you." I was sad that what was happening. But my father got something that I want. And I don't even know that I'll have that. His last words were, La ilaha illallah. <laughs> and the Prophet ﷺ said, Man kana akhiru kalamihi la ilaha illallah, dakhala al jannah. Whose ever last word is, La ilaha illallah, will enter paradise. I don't know on the day that I die that I'll be able to say that. I'm just hoping that I will be. Aisha was asked, what supplication did the Prophet ﷺ say the most? And she said, and he is the messenger of Allah. Not like any one of us. And the dua that he asked more than anything else, is Ya Muqallib al Qulub. Oh Allah, the one who changes hearts, Thabbit Qalbi ala Dinik. Make my heart firm in your religion. Make my heart firm in your obedience. And that was the dua that the Prophet asked more than anything.